Yishem Adonam Avrach Matav Adolam. Nice shirt. This is our uh, topic today. Everybody have beautiful shirts, especially you. And Be'ezrat uh, Hashem, <coughs> we're going to dedicate this Torah class to Meir Cohen Ben from Achana. May he rest in peace. Amen. Uh, we know him, uh, this is a very special man. Tzadik. Shmatot Surah B'Tzorah Hayim. The schud, the merit of his, the chasadim that he did on his life, will uh, stand for him. Bezat Hashem, the inter Um Shalom Shalom Kony. Um, Shem Basalon. I thought there were five Okay, anyways. Um, we are going to continue, Bezat Hashem, the laws, Alachot, of Anagata Boker, and you'll be Bezrat Hashem. You see today, very interesting thing that we are facing and dealing every day. Before we start on that, the Siman Bet from uh, Shulchan Aruch talks about the morning. So I'm going to skip the Modeani. Now we're going to go to the practical uh, things that we do during the morning. Now, we're always talking about tzni'ut. If I ask someone, tell me what's the definition of tzni'ut in your mind, what do you think he would tell me? Modesty. Modesty. Tzni'ut. What is tzni'ut? If I ask you, please, uh, teach me what tzni'ut is about. How you dress, how you act. So, uh, okay. It's related to men, women, kids, elderly people. What? Everybody? Yeah. Same yeah. level? Especially women. Especially women. So when you say dress, what does that mean? What's the code? Long sleeve, three quarters, half, no sleeve. Well, what's the what's the minimum required? Okay, for what? Going out, hanging in the house, going to shul, meeting. Can I walk in the house with shorts? No, no. Uh, I mean, no shoes, bare feet. I mean, yes, I can, but uh, halachically, this is okay. So this kind of thing, Be'ezrat Hashem, we will discuss today. We'll see what the halacha has to say about it. People think, listen, I'm in my own private zone. I'm at home. I can go half naked. It's only me. Woman that has, for example, let's pop to my mind, um, a shadal. Or covering her with a tichel, right? Hair cover. She has to wear it at home, or she's permitted to walk at home without it. Only, only she and her husband. Why would she have to wear it? It's just her and her husband. Her and her husband. So no need. What about someone come in the house and surprise them? Nobody can come in without. Well, that's your problem. Lock the door. Huh? Push at the door. Okay, you know that there is a lachot. Some of them are recommended. Some of them, the, it's the halacha. How to even dress up in the morning. How to tie your shoe. How you tie your shoes first? Right. Second? Right. Why? What's the difference if they do left and then right or what? Well, if I don't have shoelaces, I don't have shoelaces. So. I can get out of the house now. I'm stuck. Huh? Why? What's the reason behind it? Our chachamim, our sages were, were so bored. They, they, they were so detailed. I mean, from the second we wake up in the morning, to how do I dress up? How should I put my shoes? This is, uh, and what if I messed it up? All these halachot, Bez Hashem, we will discuss in the next few classes. So, the first halacha says the following. Lo ilbash haluko miyushav. 
Chalukho, that they are mentioning in the Halakha, in the Shulchan Aruch, means to the uh, robe. A big garment, like the Saudi Arabian now, uh, you see on the TV wearing, right? Or people in Arab countries. It's a robe. This was most very common clothing back then. It says when you wake up, you should not sit on the bed and wear your robe or your shirt or your, your pants. What do you do? Allah has said something very interesting. Everything you want to do, do under the blanket. Now, okay, so how can I wear pants under the blanket? It's going to be, this is not so easy to do. The halacha is that you should not be outside of the bed naked. What if I'm wearing shorts anyway? We usually don't go. Or pyjama. How would the, how are you expected to replace your pyjama? To switch? Under the blanket, under the cover. But nobody's there. I'm a single man. I'm all by myself. Do I, need to, do I still need to do it? If you need to go to the bathroom, but you have to get dressed. So, okay. Yeah. What about the restroom? What about the shower? Yeah. We'll discuss that in a minute. The second one says, Ali Omar, hineni I'm in the room inside, within another room inside the house. Nobody see me. Miro eni, nobody see me. Says the Shulchan Aruch. כי הקדוש ברוך הוא מלוך כל הארץ כבודו. הקדוש ברוך הוא יסדר. שם יסדר. Won't be appropriate to even dress up when you can outside of the outside the bed. I'm looking at your faces. You're very disappointed. <laughs> But it is what it is. I have to share the halacha. So what do you do in the shower or in the public? Uh, you say public bath. I know you call it. Ele fitness and these kind of places. The Allah says, no problem. You can walk naked. It's a place that everybody there, you know, but even there, try to walk as much as you can with sniud. And when you enter the shower, then take off the, uh, the robe or the towel or whatever. If you can do it inside the shower, it's even better. Did you try to put on a shirt while you in bed? Flat? Well, I have another trick. I'm using I'm 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 uh, with a t-shirt. Anyways, so I'm covered. Oh, so that that's all day. Yeah. Okay. But if you can, there is other tricks to do it. You can sit, still the robe, not the robe, the sheets around you. Next one. Yedakdek bechaluko lelovsho kedarko. Interesting to see that the halacha share something that comes from the other world. Segula. Something seguli. It says when you wear your clothing, ever and ever put your shirt upside down. What shirt upside down? Either the face, the back, the back... Or upside down. And remember we mentioned the other day about putting two clothings together. Also not to do it. This is Mama Shalacha. Yedakdek b'chaluko livsho lelovsho kedarko shelo yaafoch ha-penimi lachutz. So you won't... What's the problem with that? The Lacha says, this is very bad for forgetfulness. It happens to you that you forget a lot of stuff? I'm going to show you today a long list, because I was searching for a list. Things that cause a person forgetfulness, to forget stuff. Mishnah Bura says, Kashiyakum, when you put this robe, why it's, what's the reason that you need to put it under the blanket? When you move it, move the, 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 the blanket, When you stand, the robe will fall down. Now, 
מה חסר? יהיה אתה תכף מכוסה, כי יפול חלוקו על כל גופו מעצמו. And now he says something very interesting. I know many people today were in the cemetery. How many of you were looking on the gravestone, reading what it says on it? It happens to some of you today? Reading what the... No, no, no. Hit by other gravestones. Other gravestones, other gravestones. Yeah, 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 yeah. You did it? You can't prevent it. You're walking from his parents. I want to look at his parents' gravestone. So you know what Mishnah Bura says? He says. He says the following. Talmudo. He says if you are uh, sleeping, laying your head. Over your own clothing, it will cause forgetfulness. If you put something to block between your clothing and your head, it's okay. Meaning, if it's in a plastic bag, your own clothing, who would think that? And what's the reason behind it? And Kpeda. וכן ייזהר and not to wear two clothings together at once. Forgetfulness. Someone that goes to a cemetery and read what it says, Shalom Aleichem. What it says, what is written on the gravestone. איך אומרים מצבה? גרייבסטון. 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 תגיד להם מצבה, אני מבין. מצבה, הנה מצבה. או המסתכל בפני מת, אם מישהו מסתכל על אחד מת, אנחנו בטרבל, אה? אני תמיד עושה את זה. משכח תלמודו. אז אני חושב, מה כאלה דברים גורמים לאנשים לזכור את מה שאתה רוצה? אחד, לזכור את זה. And so I, I, I brought a list here. Things that we do every day, all the time. Go and that cause us... Forget Go back to Chayvah Kadisha. What choice do you have? Are you mentioning to answer that now? Okay. So, it says here, Chayvah Kadisha, Chayvah Kadisha, since you are occupied with a mitzvah, the mitzvah protects you. Other than that, It's not recommended. Many of what I'm going to read, it's recommendation. It's not halacha. It's not asur. You didn't commit a sin. Just the result of what's going to happen is forgetfulness. Some or very few of them, I can probably share uh, uh, the reason. Not because I don't want, because I couldn't find any. If you can, let me know. Uh, the reasons behind it. But many, many of the things I have here on the list... It's from the Talmud and other books. It's just uh, a divine predetermined principle. Let's call it that way. It is what it is. It's a determined principle. When Hashem created the world, He put it in the DNA of the world. If this, something, if this thing happens, that's going to be the result. That's what will come after that. Yes. So, uh, from the learning that we have, We learned that the Kedosh Baruch Hu created Shichachar, uh, forgetfulness. There is a whole book, you're right. There is a whole gate in Orchot Sadikim about Shichachar, forgetfulness. In order for us to learn. Right. Forgetfulness is good or bad? We want to remember everything. Depends. It depends. It depends. It's a, good, it's a Jewish answer. It depends. <laughs> <laughs> it's sometimes very good. Yep. If women won't forget the first labor, yep. they will never want to get pregnant again. <laughs> If we never forget what other people did to us, we will never be forgiven. We don't forget them. Yes. <coughs> you know that uh, forget, f forgiveness comes from forget. You know, forget, forgiveness. Yes. So during a tahara, the first yes. thing we do is we uncover the, the maze and we put a covering on the face. So maybe that's, that's the reason. It's part of that reason, yes. I'll get to it. So, but... You should know, when you are occupied with mitzvah, you are protected. The power of the mitzvah protects us. 
So Masechet Horayot in, in, in Daf Yud Gimel says the following. List of things that cause forgetfulness and when I'm finished with that I will share things that will uh, things that are recommended for a very good memory or how to fix what we mentioned. If you can add to the list I'll be happy. Please share. Some of the stuff here I don't know if ever happened it's, uh, they are rare, but it is what it is, and there is all discussion about it. Rabbi Chaim Kanievsky and Rabbi Oyerbar and Igor Moshe. It's a whole discussion on things you won't believe. First one, from the Talmud. If you eat something from what a mice or a cat eat, and some add also from what dog ate. People sometimes share with their dog, and they eat share with the dog and eat. I saw it in my own eyes in Israel. It's a family member, crazy. But <laughs> he's sharing uh, cabanos. You know what's cabanos? No with his dog. Yeah. To me it was disgusting, of course, when I was a child. So. Sharing with the dog food. He gives it to the dog and eats it also? Yeah, one bite, one bite, they sharing. I taught him this halacha, but it was keep forgetting. I don't know why. <laughs> so what happens when you do that? You forget? It causes forgetfulness. Yeah. <laughs> you know, sometimes a mice or a cat or, any, or a dog eating from what you're chewing from stuff you have in the house. People don't want to throw it away. So what they do, they slice at the corner where they touch it and eat the rest. No. Especially back then, people had to do it. Otherwise, you know, uh, food was, yeah, and food was expensive. So, Reb Chaim Kanievsky says, if you do that, you're good. Another thing is eating a heart of an animal or a chicken. The heart? The heart. It's not very common in America. In Israel, yes, in, is in Israel... Everything is good, but you need to know how to kosher it. In Israel, it's, it's very common. It's like eating, yeah, it's like eating a uh, chicken liver. Summer. When was the last time you got a chicken liver? It's hard to get it here fresh. I'm talking about the fresh. It used to be many years ago, I don't know, maybe 15 years ago, right? I asked once, uh, I used to get it, you know, I don't know if you know that, but if uh, someone has a, a lack of iron, this is really good. And I know my wife was, uh, when I was m many years ago in Eretz Israel, she has, I think it, the number should be around 12, and she has like almost 6 or 7, and she didn't feel good. I spoke with someone, he says, give her chicken liver. I did it, within two days, boom, over 14, something like that. She all over the house, cleaning, I say, you know, when you buy this all the time, <laughs> it's really working, it's good. But you need to know how to kosher it. <laughs> How you kosher a chicken liver slash heart? You take it, you shtiva erev, cut it. Palms? Palms? You know, palms? So, you. Okay. Raisins. Raisins and plums also have. Ah, okay, come on, get that. So you take the heart or the, ch or the chicken liver, crisscross, right? A little bit salt, and in the grill. You can do it in the oven at home if you have grill. Mm -hmm. Very close, really quickly, both sides, and it's good to eat. Okay. I asked Rabbi Shaul when I need it, <coughs> why you don't have it? He says because they stopped selling it because people don't know how to do it. Chaz Shaul, they eat blood. And blood, it's a mosh karet. So I asked him if he can get for him. He said, I'll get it only to you. So I used to go to Tam Tam and get it. Because it, it says for you, or you know how to do it. Huh? You can buy a grilled. Already grilled, I know. I know. But my wife won't touch it. No, my wife won't touch it. If she, she's not doing it, she won't touch it. All right. Chopped liver, yes. But not a liver. So eating uh, this chicken liver should be no problem, or beef, no problem. But the problem is with 
uh, beef uh, heart, I mean animal heart or chicken heart. It can cause forgetfulness. If you want to kosher it, it's the way I mentioned. Doesn't it make you utensil trays after that? Okay, it's a whole lot around it. You have to. So what we use is a disposable tray. You put water in it, whatever was dripped in it, and uh, we throw it away. And that's the only way to do it. And if you do it with uh, sticks, it's best because after that you can get rid of it. Or using this um, metal squeeze or something like that with the uh, lines. Uh, uh, yeah, something like that. So it has to be dedicated only for these uh, kind of food, the heart and the liver. Okay? So, the next, thi next thing is regilut bezetim. The Talmud says, everybody know that, olives. Eating olives. Someone is used to eat olives. So what is used to? What's the minimum? What olives? Three. Green, three. black. What kind, what kind of olives? Ma? Three olives you can eat. If it's more, you could have three drops of olive oil. So, okay. So, what, what, what's the minimum? What will be considered used to? I call it regilut. regilut. So, Chaim Kanyevsky says, regilut, meaning if you do it once a month, it's considered regilut. Let's say every Rosh Chodesh, you're eating, I don't know, uh, whatever you're eating with, with, with olives. It's called already regilut. Can cause forgetfulness. Um, the Yavits hold that if you're eating these olives when they are not uh, with vinegars, the one that you're eating, eating today, they're not, they're not cooked. If they're not cooked, this is most uh, dangerous or bad for us. But the Meiri says, clearly it's salted zaitim, olives, you're eating too many, can cause forgetfulness. Reb Chaim Zonulfeld, Yosef Chaim Zonulfeld, Paskin, if you eat it with olives, you dip it in olives, you have no problem. Eat as many as you can. As many as you want. Okay. Reb Chaim Palaji hold that it's only related to a black olive. You see, the whole discussion... I want to bring you all the whole opinion about the olives. And why I even discuss that? And there's more. We'll continue in a minute. Why, 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 why the whole discussion about it? Because there is a pasuk that says, it's a warning in the Torah. And the pasuk says, Okay, sorry, one second. I have over 107 sources. Is that for this? And this is just is anybody partially. Is mention how they come about that olive yeah. grows forgetfulness? Forget, 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 forgetfulness? Forget What's the question? I'm sorry, Mashallah. Is, is anybody come about to... How, how they come to... Yeah, that, that conclusion. Yeah. That conclusion. Some I have reasoning. Some I told you it's pre predetermined principle. The our sages taught us through Kabbalah. The Talmud says it is what it is. Take it as is. The Pasuk says in the book of Devarim, Deuteronomy chapter 4, Pasuk Tet. Hishamer lecha ushmor nafshecha meod pentishkach. It's a prohibition to forget Torah, Torah learning. Therefore, the Shulchan Aruch brings all the warnings, says, avoid that. Because some rabbis hold, some poskim hold, that if you don't care, you are actually breaking this Torah prohibition. You don't care, you're eating or doing stuff that will cause you forgetfulness. You'll forget your Torah learning and you'll be judged for it. Rabhaim Kanyevsky and other rabbis, um, I think the majority of the poskim says, you're not really breaking this prohibition. In which case you are, we'll see maybe at the very end of the class. But this is a serious thing. Hashem says, be careful not to forget my Torah. And I will teach you now, Shulchan says, how to avoid forgetfulness. 
because we don't want to break this Torah law to forget Torah. The other thing is, next one, when someone drinks water that he was bathing in. With soap or without soap? There, there, <laughs> <you>. <laughs> okay. So you saying you you saying you saying that, but probably some of us did. In the mikveh, after a shower, we dip us up in the mikveh. Some people go down and accidentally drink. It's it's through drinking water that you're bathing in, bathing, you're dipping yourself in. That, so if you're swimming, that can cause forgetfulness. Okay? Washing legs when you put your legs across on each other. This one is related to the Kohen, how they were um, purifying him and putting the blood over the ear, thumb, and the legs. So they were putting the cross leg. There's a... Uh, Sefirot behind some of it, it's a lot of Sefirot behind it, and you are messing up the Sefirot, and all that can cause forgetfulness. Shikha. Putting clothing under the bed while you're sleeping, you're taking your jacket. You're folding your jacket, and you're putting your head over the jacket. Happens all the time. Can cause forgetfulness. If you put something in between your head and the jacket, you solve the problem. I don't know for many of it, I don't know. I was looking, believe me, for a few days for reasoning, researching the whole internet, uh, responses, and you name it. For some, most the majority, there is no reason. It's called Inyan Seguli. Is that it's a pretty pre predetermined principle. What is it? It's part of the laws. And if you have, and if I could find an, uh, something, it's not really an explanation. It doesn't make sense. So, now this is something probably no one will, uh, I, don't know, I don't know if it ever happens to you. If you're going under a camel, <laughs> <laughs> and he eats, uh, what do you call this? Uh, the thing that holds it in the mouth, and they're holding it. Oh. It's called Afsar, in Hebrew it's called Afsar. Also, walking between two camels. According to Rabbi Chaim Zonenfeld, it's a whole discussion there also. When they are standing, not if they're passing by you. If they're standing and you pass between two camels, right? Not the cigarette. The, the <laughs> yeah. So, in order to avoid that, what you can do, the remedy for it, hold the stick in your hand or hold, put your head over your head. Don't ask me why. I couldn't find answer for that. Another thing is passing one man between two women and vice versa. Can cause forgetfulness. So the women have to do this too. <laughs> I, I didn't see it here. But Rabbi Chaim says when there are the woman standing and standing and you are passing between them, no good. But if they're passing by you, you walk in the, in the mall, I don't know, you walk in the street and two women come and all of a sudden they're split, you walk in, they're walking, don't worry about it. If they're standing and talking and you're going in between, or standing, I don't know what they're standing, whatever there is in it, and vice versa, it can cause forgetfulness. Passing by um, some type of animal carcass that spread a lot of smell, bad odor, can cause forgetfulness. Another st thing, something that is very rare, passing under a bridge that water, maybe it's not so rare, well, didn't pass under it for 40 days. Month plus, month and a half, already, 40 days. No water. Um, eating, 
for that I could find the reason. Eating bread that is not so much baked. Challah, bread that is not so baked, can cause forgetfulness. So I found in the book of Likute Ma'arach, and it actually brings it from the Yarod Vash, or by the Yarod Vash, Rabbi Nassan wrote on Ibshitz. There is a very interesting reason. It says the following. So let me just explain what we're talking about. Rabbi Yonatan Ibshitz. So we should always look for a well-baked bread. Something that's not so baked, don't eat it. Undercooked. Yeah, yeah. It happens sometimes at home when people make pizza or people make challah. Yeah, cool. And they say, you know what, this is not to serve for the guests on Shabbat. We keep it to eat maybe this week or the day or whatever. You <laughs> need to know that can cause forgetfulness. And what's the reason behind it? Yeah. Rabbi Shit says, the halacha says, you know when you do hamoti, from where you're supposed to break the bread, from the, you know that there's a special place. Where, what's the place? You have an idea? Hmm? Okay. Tavili, uh, let me let me have. Um, okay. I'm going to do. Let me do two, two plates. Okay. So <coughs> this is the two bread. I don't have anything else to dis demonstrate with. But imagine that this is the two challah. Some holding the challah like that. Some holding like that. Some like that. Uh, and then they're saying hamotzi. They're breaking it. It's, by the way, recommended to break it with your hands, not in a knife. And then dipping it in the salt three times. It's all Kabbalah. So, there's a Talmudic teaching about one of the great rabbis, the Amorahim, that was teaching his students uh, a class, or a class. And then he says to them, tomorrow we will discuss about our friends Menashe. Menashe was the king. He ruled over Yehuda 52 years. He was the son of Hezekiah. His, his grandfather was Isaiah, Yeshaya, Anovi. So, fine. Menashe came to him in a dream and said, well, What is this? What kind of a talking is this? I'm your friend or your, your father's friend? What do you mean? Tomorrow I will discuss about our friend. I was a king. In Eretz Israel. 52 years. So the rabbi was shocked. So, couldn't say anything. Menashe says, if you're so smart, tell me when you do a mochi, from where you're breaking the bread, so, so, oh, there's a special place to break the bread from. Uh, and you consider yourself smart, a great rabbi, huh? She said, please tell me, and I will say it in the class tomorrow on your behalf. And I apologize for what I did, what I said. He says, because the, the, you, have, you, t you break the bread from where it's most baked. Yeah. The part that's most baked. Yeah. According to the Kabbalah, by the way, in the evening, you break the bottom one, Bottom uh, challah, the morning at the top. You be fulfilling the mitzvah if you do vice versa. It doesn't matter. But the more you do things, the Kabbalah, you're getting more. The mitzvah is greater. The lights are greater. There's reasoning behind everything we do. Okay, fine. Going back to what we learned, that if you eat unbaked or not so baked challah or bread, can cause forgetfulness. What's the reason behind it? Then the Abishit says, before Adam, Adam, Adam and Eve sinned, there was no lack, chisaron, it's called lack, chisaron, in any food or drinks. Deficiency, to that. In any food or drinks. It was perfect, it was ready to eat. But because of the sin, Rabbi Yonatan Abishit says, the Nachash, the other power, bit. The food, and most of the food that we have today, ever since, 
has its its its, its uh, kabbalistic um, terms, but it's called eres venom, the venom of this snake. Snake is related to the malachamavet um, satan, the yetzerara. It's, it's the whole th one thing. And in order for it to be ready for us, clean to eat, it needs to go through <coughs> a fire. Baking, cooking, broiling, you name it. <coughs> Not talking about the raw food that we can eat and there is no need to bake it. Okay? In order to clear it from this power, you need to bake it or broil it, cook it. So the fire takes it away. So Yvonne Abishad says, the power of this fire will kick away and remove this venom. Therefore, th on the bread, on the challah, the place that is most rectified is where it's most baked. Because it will start where, where this part of the bread kicks this venom first. It's the strongest part spiritually on the bread, on the challah. This is why you see when someone that knows Kabbalah and knows what we've just learned, before he takes the challah, he looks. Okay, here you see it's more brownish. And then he's preparing himself to break after Hamotzi from this place. Okay? And it says, and the place that on the challah, on the bread, that it's not baked, the venom of this power is still there. And this, therefore, it will cause forgetfulness and bring confusion to a person. Who would think a bread that's not so cool? This is why we're learning this stuff. Questions? So, we know Bezat Hashem, next time we eat bread, even during the week, when the most baked, Shabbat in Yom Tov, to Chalot, Banawan, evening, tap in the morning, look before, where is the most baked area, Prepare yourself to break from that part. Three times salt and eat. Okay? When we get to the part when we're breaking uh, <coughs> the challah, we'll see how to do it. If it's good with a knife, not because you could see some people cutting with knife or, or doing a mark. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. good, it's not so good, recommended, not recommended, because you see it all the time. Having knife on the table, Shabbat, not Shabbat. It's a long discussion, but Zat Hashem. You wanted to ask something. No? I thought you were trying to... I'm just like, it's amazing that I remember anything. <laughs> you don't remember anything? <laughs> well, I remember everything. It was wrong. <laughs> <laughs> Thank God you came to the class today. I don't know how to fix it. Jam. Now you know the reasoning. Right? <laughs> don't drink the water from the bain. <laughs> 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 Break the, the bread with their own hand. Right. We come here to America, we see the Ashkenaz, we start knife. You know what, you mentioned that, so I mentioned something that's very important for everybody to know. I'm not saying which one is best or no. To cut, you can cut it with a knife, according to some Nagim. It shouldn't be a problem. But there is another problem that I saw in my own eyes. <coughs> People are doing hamotzi. So they do that. Boru hamotzi lechem in oretz. And they're cutting, and they're cutting, and they're tanking forever. And then they're breaking a piece, and then dipping in the salt and eating. What's the problem? Too long, Daniela. Why is, what's the problem? It has to be over le asiato. After you finish a beracha, immediately you have to taste, to taste from the food. It's like saying, Baruch Atah, Varo. <laughs> Exercise, jumping, and then drink. Mother. You have to be immediately. Right? This is also the difference between Sefaradi and Ashkenazi about Shabbat candles. Sefaradi and Yamina, what do they do? They do Ladlik Ne'er Shel Shabbat. And then they kindle them. Ashkenazim do the light and so we'll discuss it. And so, Rabbi, when he comes to my house, he always has to take out the knives. 
On Shabbat? When? Interesting. On my table. Amazon. During the week, the mitzvah is to remove the knife. On Shabbat, we have no, we don't actually remove the knife, and there is a reason for it. During the week, because. Uh, huh? Uh, removing it. Because someone was mourning on Jerusalem and he was stabbing himself and. I don't want to go to that topic, but on Shabbat we have the protection of the Shabbat, so we don't have to. Some still do that, and it's a debate among the rabbis, what do you do, and if you do it, you're showing that the Shabbat maybe is not so important, yeah, it's all discussion. So, we're done with the bread. So at least we know from today about the bread, it has to be fully baked, breaking from when you both baked. Uh, another thing is, Eating meat from a utensil or plate that is meant for uh, to be used as a container, as a, as a trash. For example, in the middle of this table, let's say there is a plate that we use to put all the trash. And there's a piece of meat there. And someone says, oh, why are you talking? No, I don't like it. You don't like this shish kebab? I'll eat it. <laughs> so you take it from it, and eat from it can cause forgetfulness. It's also light and trash. Has, you know, you're mixing powers. and When this meat made its way over there, it's a problem. It says meat. It says meat. Uh, <clears throat> you know, sometimes we eat, and a little piece fell on the floor. According to the Kabbalah, you're slicing an apple. One piece fell on the floor. What people do? Eh, five seconds! <laughs> <laughs> Fine, maybe. Yes. yes. So, according to the Kabbalah, throw it away. Because this part goes to the other four. This is their share. Let it go. Someone is there already. You put it now in your mouth to your body. Talking about small piece. If the whole fruit fell, don't worry about it. Wash it. And <clears throat> drinking water from a river that goes through a cemetery. According to Reb Shlomo Zalman Oyerbach, if the water goes through a pipe, it shouldn't be a problem. So we can drink, according to this, and this is from the cemetery, and uh, when we're washing hands before we enter or it comes out, should be no problem. Because you go through a pipe. And the last thing here is um, looking at a dead person's face. Now, reading from the tombstone, it depends. What depends? We can go for forgetfulness if the letters are bold. If they sunk, you know, they're graved, engraved, no problem. That's probably the main reason we see all the gravestones are engraved. In the Jewish, I, mean, I didn't check to be honest with you in any other cemetery if they, if they have any... Um, Most Jews in the Most, right. So, in, yes. In Israel, when, you, when someone, when a relative passes away, they actually take you to see the body to identify the body. Yeah. yeah. So you have to look at the face. Right. So, so Reb Chaim was asked this question, if it's permitted. I remember that uh, when my wife, uh, her husband, her, her, um, when she, she, she flew to Eretz Israel for, um, to bury her father, so she wanted the, uh, everybody ask for forgiveness, mechila and all that. And they let them see him before. And it's permitted. The rabbi didn't say anything. Why? Rabbi Chaim Kanyevsky Paskin, there's a difference between looking and looking. Lirot or lidbonin. Looking just to see that this is him or identify. A glance, a quick look, no problem. But to look deeply, that can cause forgetfulness. 
Okay? Why that of forgetfulness? I don't this know. This is, I told you. So predetermined principle. That's the only thing. Um, by the way, the Moroccan... Uh, if you do that, it's mm -hmm. like taking a nail, putting it electrical. That's going to happen. Moroccan Regardless. Custom, I'm sorry, say it again? The Moroccan custom is if somebody dies, they have to come and see his face or her face to make sure that this is the one that... They right, to identify. A quick look should be no problem. Okay? So with the gravestone, if it's engraved, no problem. Um, Rav Chaim says, <coughs> the minhag, this is the minhag, to put a stone on the earth in order to uh, fix the forgetfulness if there's a chance to get, even if it's engraved. Okay? Remember we mentioned uh, a cemetery? It's not a good place to be in general. Especially not for women. 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 Not sure. Listen, I sent this last week. Someone they didn't accept that so much. Uh, what? I'm not going to go to the seminary. I said, listen, I'm giving you the information. I sent him the letter that the Golden Mevina, you heard about the Golden Mevina, right? Mm -hmm. The Golden Mevina wrote to his mother and daughter never ever to be in the cemetery. He says, all the troubles, problems, Ainara and Malachamav, and everything comes to those who go to the cemetery. If you don't have to, you're not part of the Hever Kedisha or whatever, don't go there. Period. Now, do with that information whatever you want. And if it's an Askah of your parents? Yeah. So, the remedy for it is, if you must, some people, you know, mentally they have to go. However, they go crazy. You have to visit their parents. Or God forbid, God for has to show them if this is a child. So the remedy is to do a mitzvah that's related to your coming. So cleaning the gravestone and, and lighting a candle and saying, uh, I don't know, gathering as a part of a minyan to say Kaddish, something. Just go visit for no reason because you feel like it, because you just want to put flowers, I don't know. And even with that, even with that, you should know it's a very, very bad. With what doing that mitzvah. So because it depends on the level of the mitzvah and why you're doing the mitzvah, or maybe just to avoid what we just learned. There's a lot of cheshbon here. Right? So even in Israel, they even have tours of cemeteries. I'm not responsible on these tours. <laughs> so I don't know. They have a lot of money to go to the cemeteries. Hey, there, I send you money. Oh, tzaddikim. Tzaddikim. So about the tzaddikim, it depends which. And most of the tzaddikim, it says, by going to the... The, 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 the zchut, the merit of the tzaddik will protect you. Uh, this, you're talking about a phenomenon tzaddik. You're talking about Rabbi Shimon Bar Yochai, the Chachmei Mishnah, the Talmud, right? Rachel, all these kind of places. It's a mitzvah even to go on certain times. And I want to mention right. something. But if you go to the gravestone of Elvis Presley, I mean, I don't know. <laughs> not so much. He was Jewish, but I don't know. I don't recommend it. I don't know if the zechus of his tzaddikas will protect you. Ken. That too. I mentioned that in the class on Shabbat. That too. Because the Malach HaMavet says, the angel of death said, that he has a reshut, a permission to jump between this woman, the crowd, and all the men that will look at this woman now, especially when they are not in Tzni'ut, will be hurt. He says, I will hurt them. I have a reshut to hurt them, and I will hurt them. One way or another. And you will see the, my power, Malach HaMavet, right? That day, the next day, in the week, I have all the time in the world to catch you. But you're in my hand now. You're under my restriction, my authority. And I'll catch you. Remember I mentioned that in the cemetery many, many years ago, women never go. Never. I asked my grandma and other family member when I learned that, I said never. In the house, you say shalom, hello to the deceased, and that's it. The men would bury and come back. That's it. They knew things, you know, that today we don't pay attention to. It's a crazy world today. 
Okay, I see that actually I have some more uh, things that can cause forgetfulness. Next thing is, none of you do, I know, taking bribe. <laughs> uh, it's taking bribe. Another thing, that's something I know from very young age, leaving a book that you're studying open. That I know, I don't know the reason behind it, but... Any book? Um, no. Mm -hmm. yeah, has to have Hashem's name. There is, uh, according to the Shach, no, no, the, the book for, uh, of Torah, that you're studying. All the other books, it's good to forget. <laughs> <laughs> Just remember, I was reading a novel, it is nonsense. <laughs> according to the Shach, there is a demon comes, Shindalid, his name is... Shomer Dopin, the guards of the, how uh, you say that? Pages. 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 Shomer Dopin, he cause forgetfulness. One of the reasons is because you show disrespect to the Sefer. Mm -hmm. Leave it like that open. So put a mark, close it, come back. If you're going for a second to make a cup of coffee, even that, close, come back later. You're leaving the book. Not now you need to pick up something from the floor. You're living. Close it. Put a mark. No, when you come back. Any day? All the time. All Any day. Uh, it says, <laughs> most of the book, even? Yeah, but it's Some non sneeze <laughs> guys just walked by. Don't, huh? ladies, don't look outside. <laughs> <laughs> it's inappropriate. <laughs> Some men just walked by with no shirts on. It's not sneeze. <laughs> They weren't Jewish, though. <laughs> I hope so. Okay, I have, I have four more minutes. From I knew I won't finish it today. I have four more minutes. Is it one thing? Can you give us with what we can remember? I will try. Yes, I will try. <clears throat> I have a few more and we'll do it. You see, Leah, I told you 15 minutes before to tell me. It's my fault. I forgot. You also told me again at 15. <laughs> no, but I, I wrote a message. You have a WhatsApp? Yeah, I need it's on message. It's on WhatsApp. I sent the message, no? Posted mm -hmm. today. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And I uh, check it. Maybe something you need to ref uh, update. Thank you. Thank you. So, um, the book. Um, wearing clothing, uh, two clothing, two uh, clothes together. Uh, the Sefer Shulchan Torah says, even when you remove them, removed one by one, we already learn about the light that every uh, vessel, every uh, utensil, every clothing has its own light. When you wearing them together or taking them off together, you're blocking one of the lights. You're causing hashecha. Hashecha means darkness. And hashecha, darkness, is the letter of shichecha. Same letters. It's hinted there. I have two more. Um... Oh, this is something also probably most of you know. When you're washing hands, you dry them on your clothing. It's no good. It can cause forgetfulness. Washing hands, doing that. Okay. Um, anytime they are, your, your clothing are wet. And the last one is... I was looking to find... Raise your hand. Don't be upset with me. I don't know... Looking at someone that is upset or a nida. But what if your wife is uh, in this situation? So you're not looking at her face now. So I, I don't think, I didn't find yet the source for it. Uh, that is related to your own wife. This is why Remini Rabbi wrote Sadiqim didn't look at any woman that came to them. Even they came for consultation. She might be a nida and it can cause forgetfulness. Okay. I'm pretty sure it's not your own wife or daughter. All those that you're permitted to touch and hug. You permitted your daughter or your, your wife when she's uh, not in either. Okay. Um, now we'll share two things or three. How you can... Uh, two minutes. How you can fix things that can help with your memory. You have a very strong memory. Study Torah and remember it. So, the first one is tefillah. The fact that you're davening properly, 
pronouncing the words correctly, which I plan to do today, a uh, demonstration, and I didn't, Bez Hashem, next week. I will want to go over the Shema Yisrael, how to pronounce it. Second thing is Yirat Shamayim. Someone who learns how to fear God properly, and also it's from the gate of Al-Chut Tzadikim, you can learn that. Second, third thing, next thing is studying Torah from one rabbi. Um, next, studying by saying the words out loud so you can hear what you learn. How many times you saw in the shul or in the yeshiva, there's so much noise. Because people read out loud. You read out loud, it's good for memory, to remember. Mi'ut ta'anug. Less pleasurable things in life. Chazara kishkida, repetition. Limud in Talmidim, standing with students. Standing with students, you have to study, you have to prepare. And they ask you questions, go back and forth, back and forth. So the same line or the same pasuk you do five, six, seven times, it helps to remember. Makes sense. Anava, humbleness. Next one is lechadesh chidushim, to write chidush. You know what chidush means? Uh, wrong thoughts, right? You read something about uh, from the weekly parsha, the Mishnah, Tal, whatever. Say, so, wow, that's a good point. I want to write it down. You writing? This is very good for um, zikar memory. Havana to understand, limud betzina, studying with uh, humility or Modest. and modestly, and, yeah. What does that mean? Means not to show off. For everybody that you know, that you're learning, you're, you're very loud. You want to show off that you're there so everybody will notice you. Just enough so you can hear yourself. And the last thing from the long list that I have is learning in the Bet Knesset. There is a special segula, studying in the Bet Knesset. If you study Torah here at home or in the Bet Knesset, Bet Knesset is better. There's a lot of Kedushah, there's a good light and energy in the Bet Knesset that will rest upon you, and it's very good for memory. So, Bezah Hashem, I'll try better next week to go over the Sidur and to do this the second time we're skipping. Ah, Shavuot. Okay. So, the week after Bezah Hashem. Shavuot to everybody, God bless you, with all the Berachot in the Torah and the Mishnah, we should meet only in times of joy. Amen. Amen.